The Arctic tundra is a land of ice and snow, a beautiful yet unforgiving environment, home to one of the most fearsome predators on Earth, the polar bear. These magnificent beasts are known for their incredible strength and resilience and are often seen as symbols of the untamed wilderness. But make no mistake, if you find yourself face to face with one of these apex predators, you'll quickly realize that they are not to be trifled with. Polar bears may look cuddly and cute from a distance, but they are anything but up close. These massive creatures can take down prey much larger than themselves, with razor-sharp claws, powerful jaws, and lightning-fast reflexes. They are also fiercely territorial and can become aggressive if threatened, making them dangerous to humans who venture into their icy domain. But despite their reputation as killers, polar bears are also an integral part of the Arctic ecosystem. They play a critical role in maintaining the delicate balance of nature in this harsh and unforgiving environment. Their remarkable adaptability allows them to survive in conditions that would be unbearable for most other animals. In this video, we'll explore three cases of polar bears attacking humans they came across and the terrifying details of what it's like to face white, hungry death. Story 1 In the winter of 2021, a French tourist named Pierre Fournier embarked on a journey to the northernmost part of the Earth, the Arctic. Pierre came from Montpellier, France, and had always been fascinated by the icy landscape and the wildlife of the region, and had long dreamed of visiting the place. He had just started a photography hobby and figured there was no better place to take pictures than the Arctic. He organized his trip to Greenland independently, but he joined an expedition group for his security so he wouldn't get lost. Pierre and his expedition group set sail for Nuuk, a port town in Greenland. The journey was long and arduous, but the excitement of reaching the Arctic kept Pierre's spirits high. After several days, the group finally reached the icy region. The stunning beauty of the landscape left Pierre amazed, and he spent his days exploring the glaciers and observing the wildlife. Despite the Arctic's boring reputation, Pierre was more and more amazed with each passing second. One day, while on a solo hike near the group's encampment, Pierre saw a polar bear in the distance. He had seen polar bears in documentaries before, but had never seen one in the wild. Excited by the prospect of seeing one up close, he approached the bear slowly, taking photographs along the way. As he approached, Pierre realized the wind was blowing into his back, taking his scent directly toward the bear. He was too slow to react to this thought as he saw the bear turn in his direction and start charging. His heart raced, and he was frozen in fear because there was nowhere to run. He tried to inch away backward, but the bear was too fast. The polar bear was upon him instantly, swiping at him with its powerful paws. Pierre tried to defend himself with a hiking pole, but the bear was too strong. It knocked the pole from his hands and attacked him, biting him on the shoulder and dragging him to the ground. Pierre screamed in pain as the bear mauled him. He could feel his powerful jaws crushing his bones and tearing his flesh. He knew he had to fight back if he wanted to survive. In a desperate attempt to escape, Pierre kicked the bear in the face with all his might. The bear grunted but was not swayed and continued mauling Pierre as if he had done nothing. It was not done yet. Pierre tried to crawl away, but the bear was simply relentless. It pounced on him, pinning him to the ground. It sunk all of its weight on Pierre's upper back, and he could feel his ribs cracking and the pressure on his lungs. All of the air from his lungs was expelled by the force, so he couldn't even scream. He could feel his strength ebbing away with his breath and the blood escaping his body. Just when Pierre thought it was all over, he heard a gunshot, then another, and another after that. The bear let out a mixture of a grunt and a roar and stumbled away, and Pierre realized that someone had come to his rescue. Three expedition group members had noticed that Pierre had been gone for too long and set out to find him, stumbling upon him just before the bear took the killing bite. They continued shooting the bear with their rifles. It took two more shots to make the bear run away, 
and they could see it falter in its steps a few hundred yards away, eventually slumping to the ground. Pierre was still on the ground, trying to make his lungs take in air, but it wasn't working. One of the explorers knelt next to him and helped him catch his breath, while another member broke out the first aid supplies and patched up Pierre's wounds as much as he could. They contacted another supply outpost in their region, which dispatched two men on snowmobiles. They took Pierre to the outpost and got him the help he needed. He was airlifted to a hospital where he fought through his wounds and pulled through. The attack had left him with severe lacerations and bite marks all over his body, a broken shoulder, and several fractured ribs. Pierre spent several weeks in the hospital, undergoing multiple surgeries and receiving treatments for his injuries. The attack had traumatized him, and he struggled to understand what had happened. Despite the severity of his injuries, Pierre refused to give up. He was determined to recover and return to his normal life. He underwent extensive physical therapy and rehabilitation and slowly regained his strength. Weeks after the attack, Pierre returned to France as a changed man. The scars on his body constantly reminded him of the attack, but he refused to let them define him. He continued to live life to the fullest, but with a newfound respect for the power of nature. Story 2 The vast wilderness of Alaska is home to some of the most awe-inspiring sights in the world, from majestic glaciers to towering mountains. But it's also a place of untamed beauty, where danger lurks around every corner. For one man, visiting Alaska would be a life-altering experience when a polar bear attacked him. John Clay had come to Alaska to explore its rugged terrain, hoping to experience the region's natural wonders up close. He was bored with the mundane life of an accountant and wanted to experience nature in all its beauty. And what's a better place to visit than Alaska? A small group of friends accompanied him on his journey, all of whom shared his sense of adventure and love for the great outdoors. They had planned their trip meticulously, bringing all the necessary gear and supplies, including a powerful rifle to protect against potential threats. It took them a few weeks to organize their trip due to time constraints, but they eventually got everything sorted out and were in Alaska within another week. Their accommodation wasn't special, just a cabin away from a small town, but it was more than enough for the four of them. One morning, while they were hiking through a remote area of the wilderness, they spotted a polar bear in the distance, about 200 yards away from their location. They were shocked as they understood the danger of polar bears, Still, they felt an overwhelming curiosity that made them stay and watch. At first, the bear seemed to mind its own business, and the group watched it with a sense of wonder and awe. They inched onward, ensuring they did not attract the bear's attention. They bickered amongst themselves in annoyed whispers about turning back, but within a few moments, they all froze to see the bear staring directly at them. It stepped forward, growled, and charged. The group scattered, running in different directions as the bear pursued them. John was caught off guard, and he found himself face to face with the bear in a matter of seconds. The bear was enormous, its powerful jaws gnashing as it lunged at John with terrifying speed. John tried to defend himself with his arms outstretched toward the bear, but it was pointless, its claws tearing through his clothing and flesh as it mauled him with incredible strength and ferocity. John screamed in agony as the bear continued to attack, its powerful jaws clamped around his leg. One of the group members, armed with the only rifle they brought, fired at the bear to drive it away. But the bear was undeterred and continued to maul John with relentless force. The group was running out of options and they knew that time was running out for John. A second shot fired into the bear's back also did not stop it. The two shots, combined with half a can of bear spray expelled by another group member, finally made the bear back off. The beast ran away from the group, and John felt a great release of pressure. He was left lying on the ground, his body mangled and torn by the bear's attack. His friends rushed to stop the bleeding and keep him conscious. They were panicked, but understood the urgency of taking John to the nearest emergency room, so they took their chances with his injuries 
and carried John on their shoulders, with one group member keeping watch with the rifle. It took them about 20 minutes to walk back to the cabin and another 10 to get to the nearby town. They struggled to keep him responsive. The trail was hard to maneuver while carrying John. They managed to get him to the hospital in time, much to the shock of the attendees in the emergency room. His injuries were extensive, with deep gashes and puncture wounds covering his body. He underwent multiple surgeries to repair the damage, but the road to recovery would be long and difficult. The attack had shaken the entire group, reminding them of the dangers of the unprepared venturing into the Alaskan wilderness. But it also reminded them of the incredible resilience of the human spirit as John fought valiantly to overcome his injuries and reclaim his life. Today, John is still recovering from the attack, but remains determined to return to the wilderness he loves. The experience was harrowing and traumatizing, and John decided it would not hinder his adventurous spirit. He knows that the danger is real, but that the rewards of exploring this incredible place are worth the risk for John and countless others like him. Story 3 Alexei was a miner in the cold, snowy tundras of Russia. His days were spent toiling in the mines, digging for precious metals deep within the earth. Despite the harsh conditions, he loved his work and took pride in his ability to extract valuable minerals from the unforgiving terrain. He had worked as a miner for 20 years, so he knew the work well and never missed a day. One day, Alexei was working alone, near the mine entrance, with the rest of the crew tending to some maintenance deeper in the mine. Eventually, the sound of the wind was muddied by another sound from the tunnel he was working in. He looked up and started up the tunnel, weaving through the narrow corridor as best as possible. When he arrived near the tunnel entrance, he was shocked to find the worst kind of visitor, a polar bear. The bear was huge, easily twice Alexei's size, with shaggy white fur and dull brown eyes. They were just a dozen feet apart, and the tension in the air could be sliced with a knife. Alexei knew that polar bears were dangerous, but he had never seen one up close before. They usually lurked away from their excavation site, with their closest encounter being a mile away from each other. He froze in fear, unsure of what to do next. The bear seemed just as surprised to see Alexei and backed away, startled. Then, without warning, the bear charged forward, its massive paws slamming against the ground as it lunged toward Alexei. Its hunting instinct was triggered, and things were not looking good for the unfortunate miner. Instinct took over, and Alexei stumbled backwards and broke into a sprint. He could hear the bear's heavy breathing and pounding footsteps behind him, knowing he had to find a way to defend himself. He remembered he was in a place he knew extensively. Each crack and crevice felt like home. He ducked behind a small outcropping of stone and dove through it directly into a small elevator for hauling up equipment. As he struck the floor hard, he could hear the bear roaring behind him and slamming into the narrow opening in the entrance to the elevator. It gnashed its teeth and growled as it pushed its head through the gap, inches from Alexei's face. He could feel its hot breath as it steamed in the cold winter air. Alexei screamed for help and tried to look for anything to stop the bear, but he realized it could not get through the opening as it was too large. However, it managed to push a single paw through the opening and flay open Alexei's leg, making him scream even more. It caught on his pants and pulled him toward the beast's mouth, and he was sure it would end his life. It was simply too powerful to resist and with every passing second, he was pulled closer and closer. Just as he thought this was his end, Alexei heard a loud thump, followed by the bear retracting its paw, but not pulling its head from the elevator opening. As he turned to gaze toward the bear, he saw a massive rock fall directly on its head, thrusting it down to the ground. It grunted in pain, quickly pulled its head out of the opening, and ran away to the tunnel entrance. Alexei pushed through the pain to look up from the elevator, only to find his friend and co-worker looking down, smiling, and giving him a thumbs up. When he heard the commotion, he ran to the elevator and used an opening above it to chuck large stones at the bear, 
and saved Alexei's life. Alexei spent several weeks recovering from his injuries, but he never forgot the terror of that day. The memory of the polar bear's savage attack stayed with him for the rest of his life, a constant reminder of the dangers lurking in Russia's tundra's unforgiving wilderness. Despite the trauma he endured, Alexei never lost his love for mining. He returned to the tunnels as soon as he could. But from that day forward, he always carried a weapon with him just in case fate would have it that his encounter would be repeated. Story 4 Alaska has one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, but among its most special characteristics are its lush, rich forests. Forestry is a major part of Alaska's economy and thus requires numerous arborists to keep it steady. This type of occupation comes with many risks and harsh environments. For arborist Elliot Davis, this harsh environment is just another day on the job. Working high in the treetops, he's used to encountering all sorts of challenges, but nothing could have prepared him for what happened on a fateful day in the remote wilderness of Alaska. A logging company had hired Elliot to clear trees from an area due for development. The site was deep in the wilderness's heart, miles from any town or city. Accompanied by his small crew of apprenticed arborists, they set to work for that day. Elliot had them tend to some basic tasks around the main site while he felled some trees in the distance for further processing. He became aware of a strange sound in the distance after about 20 minutes of working. It was a low, growling noise, unlike anything he had ever heard before. He saw a huge polar bear emerging from the trees as he looked around. It was enormous, with thick white fur and more imposing than anything he could imagine. Elliot was stunned. Polar bears were not uncommon, but they never approached their sights. He froze, unsure of what to do. He was hanging from his climbing gear, but it was in reach of the bear if it stood on its hind legs. It inched forward, progressively growling louder and louder. He had always carried a can of bear spray with him on his job sites, as he reached for it now, but the spray was useless against a bear this big. As he aimed the can at the animal, the bear charged forward, swiping at him with its massive paws. It caught his leg with its claw. Elliot was knocked off his branch, but kept hanging from the tree closer to the bear's swiping paws. It lunged toward him and tried to rip him from the line, holding him up against the tree. As he hung from the tree, he realized that his life was seconds away from being snuffed out by the monster swiping at him. So he turned to the chainsaw he had attached to his harness. He had to pull it up as it was swinging at the bear's level, but he eventually pulled it to his grasp and pulled the start cord with everything he had. The chainsaw revved up to life, and the sound of it managed even to deter the bear for a few moments. It backed down to the floor, but quickly regained its courage and was back to swiping at Elliot within a few moments. Elliot realized that this was the final moment and thrust the chainsaw forward as far as possible. It connected. The bear stumbled back in pain as its paw started bleeding profusely. It tried to put its weight on its paw, but couldn't so it started to lumber away, still growling. Elliot stayed in the same position, frozen in fear as he stared at the bear until it left his sight. He kept the chainsaw revving to the maximum the entire time, forgetting it was in his hands. Looking down, he could see his leg was still bleeding, but nothing to be worried about. His apprentices ran to the scene as they heard the unnaturally long chainsaw revving and came to investigate. They found their mentor swinging from the tree with no real means of setting himself straight, so they went to help him down. However, at this point, Elliot saw that his harness was damaged during the attack, and it broke immediately. He came tumbling to the ground and fell directly on his gashed leg. The weight of his equipment and himself was too much for the leg to handle, so his tibia snapped clean in half. His scream must have been heard for miles and he temporarily passed out from the pain. When he came to, he found that his leg was tied with a tourniquet and a brace made of sticks. His apprentices took the opportunity to make sure his leg was okay while they called emergency services. They arrived via helicopter within an hour.
and Elliot was airlifted to Anchorage, where his injuries were treated. Even though he was all right after the attack, it still took him multiple months to completely heal the bones in his leg and to get back to work. The trauma stayed with him for much longer than that. He developed PTSD from the incident and required therapy, but he eventually returned to work as before. The same apprentices who helped him with his injuries still worked with him for years. The logging company acknowledged Elliot's incident, paying for his medical expenses and hiring guards with rifles to monitor their logging grounds from then on. <laughs>